Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today we're going to be going over the questions and answers of the vehicle gameplay team from the recent Star Citizen Live and a schedule of what's coming up this week in Star Citizen. So this week in Star Citizen, Alpha 3.20 is out to live, probably by the time you see this video. We have a video going over getting the best possible experience from starting your 3.20 journey, which I will link down below. But yeah, 3.20 is out to live. There's a load of stuff happening. Lock and load. Protect the good citizens of Stanton from encroaching pirate threats. On the 21st of September, the Battle for Stanton's infamous drugs lab will reignite in the return of the Jump Town event. This is basically taken hold of a particular uh, facility um, that's actually quite big now. The Jump Town facilities are twice as big as they once were uh, a while ago, um, and they've got two dispensaries now, but you keep on getting loot dispensed out of these dispensaries, some valuable drugs, and you stay Stay there and take as many drugs as you want until other players potentially come along and blow up all your ships and attack you. So um, stay there, get a load of money, leave when you want. Oddly, Jump Town is an event which was an emergent sort of set of gameplay that happened at Jump Town and has been ratified as gameplay, but doesn't just happen at Jump Town. Jump Town is one of the locations, but there are other locations in the game that this sort of event will happen at, but the facilities are pretty similar. CitizenCon 2953, the biggest event so far for CitizenCon is just over a month away. There are still tickets available if you want to go and physically attend the event, but uh, you can watch for free on the 21st and 22nd of October on the Star Citizen Twitch channel. That's what I'm going to be doing. Clan Imperium Games will be sharing more details about the event later this week, so keep an eye out. So what is happening this week? Later Tuesday, we've got a narrative team post with the latest Galactopedia update. Wednesday, we've got a roadmap update. So hopefully this will be showing what's happening beyond 3.20 rather than just going, yep, yeah, all those features were launched with 3.20. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that we get um, 3.20.x stuff and 3.21 stuff as well. Um, Thursday. Inside Star Citizen has the second part of the design brief um, stuff, so um, they are going to be detailing the future of cargo careers. And topics will include vehicle and location inventory changes, larger item support, kiosk changes, the item bank, and unique item recovery. So that's going to make a lot of people happy for lots of different reasons. Unique item recovery, though, does sound like if it's a piece of flair or your um, sort of golden set of armor or something, you will be able to recover that without having to reset your account. A lot of these are sort of quality of life things, but um, they are part of the expansion of cargo and cargo careers coming in the future. We'll also see the return of the Jump Town Dynamic event on Thursday. So that's going to put 3.20 under pressure. Get involved with that. It might be a terrible experience. I'm hoping it's going to be a great experience. Um, things I'm going to be looking for are performance drops, um, server instability, invisible players, desync, that sort of jazz. Or well, maybe lo not looking for invisible players. You'll 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 feel them when they kill you. Um, it's Friday, we've got a Star Citizen live. That's going to be on the Star Citizen Twitch at 3 p.m. UTC. That's going to be sound design. Um, talking about soundscapes for the game. I'm not hugely interested in that, but I didn't think I was going to be hugely interested in some of the other sound um, episodes they've done recently, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. Last week we had those post-mortems for 3.18, 3.19, we had the monthly reports for Persistent Universe and Squadron, um, and obviously we've got Pirate Week that's just about to end. I've got videos on all of those in a lot more detail if you are interested on my channel and going over each of those post-mortems, going over each of those monthly reports. Um, it's probably worth taking a look, but we are on the road to CitizenCon at the moment, which does mean they obscure a lot of development information because they want to have loads of reveals and cool stuff at CitizenCon. The Tumbrel Storm was again the sneak peek in the newsletter that's going to be coming to a 3.20.x patch, we know that. Um, the Tumbrel Storm or the Santok Yai, I'm not sure which is the most sneaked peek vehicle now. It's probably the Santok Yai just. So, another thing I want to talk about. There was a Star Citizen Live Ask the Devs Vehicle Gameplay episode, which I want to do a summary of. The gameplay vehicle team are now focused on Star Citizen's Persistent Universe features. They've got a load of devs from that were working on Squadron 42 stuff, and now they're formed and focused on the Persistent Universe. The show was a Q&A with some predefined questions and some live questions from the audience on Twitch. 
Let's go through these. Why is there no rotational decoupled mode? So they've tested this and it's really hard to control. So they're not planning on adding a specific rotational decoupled mode at this stage. They mentioned there may be malfunctions in the future that do something similar, which sort of um, knock your ship around and make it spin or whatever. But obviously stuff may change in the future with rotational decoupled stuff. Maybe it becomes viable to do. Uh, but yeah, as they said, um, really hard to control. Was the change of the Moby Glass button to tab inspired by Starfield? No, the Arena Commander team wanted the scoreboard to be on tab and then the Persistent Universe team went, well, there's no scoreboard in the Persistent Universe and there's no uh, Moby Glass in Arena Commander, so they've put the Moby Glass on tab now. There are a billion controls in Star Citizen, that is an exaggeration, but I hate it when Cloud Imperium move them around. It really annoyed me when they do stuff like that. Ugh. Nautilus Mine Launch System. So um, where is this? How progressed is it? They've done mines. Mines are actually working in, in game now. Um, so space mines that float around and I believe the turret mines as well. They are um, working in engine. They haven't started active development on the Nautilus's mine launcher ability though. Why is the Gladius the tester for master modes? So for people that don't know, this is the only sort of ship you can test master modes with in the experimental mode uh, in 3.20. It's internally used as a tester ship and a baseline ship. It's just a good ship for combat and is one of the main ships in Squadron 42. So it's probably had the most development time and tweaking of any ship. They've tested various multi-crew ships for Mastermates as well internally, like the Constellation. The resource management system will really change up multi-crew ships in the future as well. But with Mastermates and the tests they're doing in 3.20 in the experimental mode stuff, and they do want as much feedback as possible. Will we be able to unflip vehicles? Yes, they want to be able to do this with tractor beams, um, but there's also a new physics system for ground vehicles that gives them real weight or better weight. Uh, in the future, you'll be able to write vehicles in some way. There's also a brand new tire model, so the way that tires sort of grip to the ground. They plan to support various other controllers and inputs and accelerations. There will be more accurate terrain physics in the future as well with tarmac, ice, sand, all um, being different to drive on. They need to mark up levels and biomes so that vehicles know what they're driving on though. Uh, the center mass of the Nova tank is bad. It's getting updated though. They've been working on suspension and collisions. You shouldn't jump or fall over erratically anymore. You shouldn't be really weirdly top heavy. There will be roads and other flatter areas that will be more suitable for vehicles for gravlev stuff. Um, they are also making improvements to make these um, less bumpy and hopefully avoid more obstacles sort of naturally. What's the hold up on the Ranger wheeled bike? They need to get the Mule and Nova over to the new ground physics system first. Then it will be based on if they have enough dev resources available. It's a two wheeled bike. It will require some iteration. They haven't got any other two wheeled bikes at the moment. They don't want it to just be a car with different animations. Stability and falling off may be a thing. Can we tow things with ground vehicles? There's no plans, but they did say it would be cool. Will ground vehicles run on fuel or batteries? They're sort of working on V2 of ground vehicles at the moment, and they're going to be just like ships with the way that they um, have the resource management system, the components, and they use fuel, though there might be some differences with power and fuel styles. They want to update various vehicle HUDs as well. Are aerodynamics going to be applied to ground vehicles? They're not currently being worked on. Potentially, this would be the next step after they do a load of the V2 work on vehicles that they've got planned. They don't want a full sim game, and they do want it to be fun, semi realistic, and there's a whole rabbit hole of going down aerodynamics for ground vehicles. Are there going to be better lights for ships and vehicles? Yes, yeah, some blind you, others have very bad lights, they're working on it, they're selling standards for the different manufacturers. How will quantum interdiction work with master modes? So this is being pulled out of quantum drive. The person using the quantum interdiction device, or the QED, uh, will uh, have to be in SCM mode. So they're not in nav mode, they're in their sort of weapons and combat mode. Uh, when you get pulled out of quantum, your quantum drive will be disabled. They then said that you would be limited to around SCM speeds while that drive is disabled. Now that's something I'd never actually thought about. Your cruise speed actually may be a product of your quantum drive. So it's the quantum drive is allowing you to go faster because it's giving you a partial quantum bubble or something like that. So please remember bits like this might change, um, but there are various open questions that they need to test. They want haulers to be able to escape sometimes for from when pirates trap them like this. It shouldn't just be boom, pirates and QED win. Um, there may be resistances 
to um, this and assumedly the quantum drive will become stable again at some point so you can escape uh, so you, you all need to get far enough away or hide or or something it's the quantum dampener versus the quantum snare thing how are these actually going to function with master modes in practice I think we're going to have to actually wait and see, um, but at least we have some uh, description from Cloud Imperium on that. Will it be possible to reload and rearm a ship manually? Quite possibly. It may well be part of multi-crew. We do know that obviously you can change weapons and put on uh, missiles and stuff on ships now, so I don't think it's uh, a, a big step for them to actually have reloading ships uh, in the future. Stealth! Question mark. Uh, managing your ship systems and the environment will allow any ship to stealth gameplay to some degree. Some ships and components are going to be more suited for stealthing. The resource network updates will really affect stealth and emissions. So yeah, it's about detection stealth, but um, you may also be able to confuse an enemy. You might be able to spoof um, what signal you are, pretend to be a hauler or a fleet of Idris, or you could be just really loud and um, sort of like blurt out a load of IR so that people can't really tell what you are at all. Uh, thermal shields, that might prevent heat leaving your ship though, uh, but that could be quite dangerous if they build up for quite a long time. Like obviously the Terrapin's got something like that. How does the vehicle gameplay team feel about Arena Commander updates? So it's exciting for them to uh, allow for more testing and iteration in Arena Commander. Players can obviously try master modes uh, with the experimental modes there. They're looking forward to feedback on that and all the other game modes and stuff that are tested. Lots of interesting gameplay can be done in a quick isolated environment. The original intent of Arena Commander can now be realised as a focused testbed to assist the development of the persistent universe. How do they determine how well a vehicle or ship handles? So they discuss it, then they concept it, and art um, is done for it, and then there's further discussions that sort of help inform how that will handle after they've seen what it sort of looks like in concept. They then balance it out with similar ships in the Pantheon and go, it slots in here. The manufacturer will help inform this as well, but no ship will be the best in all areas. Some will excel in acceleration or strafing. New systems obviously then affect all ships, but they will roughly fit in the same place they did in the Pantheon. Uh, they are doing a bit of future-proofing as well here, but they aren't able to retune all ships every patch. Um, obviously, balance for Star Citizen is hellish at the moment, where they're having so many new sort of features and, and reworks of current features, master modes, and components, all that sort of jazz at the moment, very in flux. Some other stuff, they've been doing a general pass on ships and components. Various things should have more appropriate health pools. Uh, do CIG listen to community feedback? Yes. Are there any updates to the Fury? It's going to get various balance passes. Um, it should be fast and agile. That's where it fits. Very small. Uh, the Gladiator. Any updates there? Um, they're going to be improving it. Some of the Fury updates affected other ships like the Hornet and Gladiator poorly, but Gladiator will get some love in the future. The Terrapin. Um, that will have more powerful VTOLs in the future. Some aerodynamic changes that are coming will help with that too. Um, I am looking forward to when it has its sort of heat uh, vents and stuff like that, because obviously we discussed that earlier. But boom, that's it for your Star Citizen news and summary today. I am really interested to know what you think about Alpha 3.20. If you've been able to jump into the live patch yet, are you having a great time with it? Is it terrible? Um, what do you think of the new ground updates? What about master modes? Have you tested out master modes. Are you going to be getting involved with the Jump Town event? Um, do you think 3.20 or um, more specifically Jump Town will break everything? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. NordVPN is amazing and you should buy it. It's so useful, it's easier to tell you what it can't do. NordVPN can't do your taxes. Nord, how much do I owe for VAT? NordVPN can't help you buy more spaceships. Nord, add a terrapin to my shopping cart. NordVPN can't cook for you. No, my cabbages! And NordVPN can't be your girlfriend. Can't or won't NordVPN, if that is your real name. NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer will help you connect to the internet more safely, securely, and anonymously, with greater access to the content you want. But can I teach it to love? Links below for the best NordVPN deals around. Every month we have a ship giveaway, and for September, that's for the Drake Corsair, that fantastic exploration ship. Not only will you be able to explore the verse with it, but the ship is perfectly competent at a huge range of gameplay, and is a fantastic mission running ship. You can use it for cargo, you can put some vehicles in there, it's reasonably good in a fight, one of the true multi-role, multi-crew ships. 
to be in for a chance of winning one of those, just comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. Also down below are links to be able to support the channel more. There's the join button, making you one of my elite channel members. You'll get occasional exclusive content. There's also YouTube badges and emotes to show your support. There's also Patreon for those of you that prefer that. We try to mirror the rewards on there as well. But just people liking, subscribing and sharing these videos goes a long way. A heartfelt thank you to everyone that watched the video. I hope you have a great September and I'll see you in the verse.